Okay, everyone. So in part five of module two, what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about ideal gas and how can we measure the deviation from ideal gas behavior. And this is the final part of module two and will not be on your first quiz, but will be used for further, um, further chapters down the line. So deviation from ideal gas behavior means Sometimes our gases are not going to behave exactly like ideal gas. And we do come up with a correction factor to the ideal gas equation. Which is called the compressibility factor. And what the compressibility factor is, is essentially a um, correction factor that we use within our equation to correct the essential density of our gas in some ways. So this correction factor is called Z and is equal to PV over RT. So if we look at it in the context of our ideal gas equation, we have, usually we have PV equals RT, that's our ideal gas. And what our Z factor does is we actually add our Z factor to the equation. And if we have an ideal gas, Z would just be equal to one. If we deviate from ideal gas, Z might be a little bit different than 1. So for a real gas, Z can be a little bit greater or less than unity, less than 1. Okay? So this equation here is not the definition of Z. This is just used in the context of an experiment. So in an experiment, what we can do is we can say, all right, we set a temperature of 300 Kelvin. We use um, a certain gas like nitrogen and we, we then know a certain pressure and we know the specific volume of the gas. Let's calculate it all together and divide PV, RT by PV and, sorry, divide PV by RT and we get a certain value for Z. And so this is what this, ex this type of experiment is essentially we can find, sorry about that, we can find P, V, and T for every temperature and we just plot it on a graph of Z versus pressure, for example, okay, where Z is PV over RT. If we know P, we know V, and we know T and R, we can just find Z directly. So I'm going to copy over a figure now that shows you an example of that experimental data. So this is an example. We have compressibility on the left, which is our Z. So this is our Z factor, and we have pressure on the bottom. And what we see is that, let me just erase this so that we ha see the numbers. So we have a value of one here, and this is kind of our normal value. Now, we see that if we do the experiment at a temperature that is equal to 300 Kelvin, so if our temperature is equal to 300 Kelvin, 
we follow this we follow this line of one up until we reach somewhere here so we reach a certain value um, of pressure and then once the pressure gets increased the pressure is so high that the, the gas that starts behaving not like an ideal gas so remember we're using PV equals ZRT. If Z is close to one, then that means we have an ideal gas because it just cancels out. And we see that from here, we have lines of constant temperature. So we have a line of 200 Kelvin, for example. So looking at the line of 200 Kelvin, we can see that it deviates much earlier. So it starts deviating here. And we see that our values for compressibility change all the way down to 0.8. And after a certain pressure, they start increasing. Now, what we can see, though, is that at low pressure, so under one megapascal, if the temperature is a reasonable temperature above 200 Kelvin, let's say, which is a pretty cold temperature when you think about it, it's minus 70 degrees, minus 73 degrees Celsius, we see that the, the behavior is close to ideal gas. Okay, we see that we're pretty close to Z is equal to one, which means that we're pretty close to ideal gas. The more Z deviates from ideal gas, the more it's not gonna behave like an ideal gas. So if Z is 0 0.5, we're gonna be very far from ideal gas. And you can see that they also added for this, so this is a plot of nitrogen. Okay, so it's nitrogen, which is the most, um, the most common, element in our air. So nitrogen, we can see that if you go into this region here, it would be a saturated mix. And then at the very bottom would be a saturated liquid. So you do not want to use for a saturated mix, you do not want to use uh, the compressibility factor or ideal gas. Okay, and you see that at very low temperatures, it deviates quite far, for example, at 130 degrees Kelvin, it, it varies quite far from compressibility, so you wouldn't be able to use ideal gas. So this is a chart that tells us where we can use ideal gas and for what reasons can we use ideal gas. So what are the conclusions we can, we can, we can say is, first of all, we can say that nitrogen behaves like ideal gas at 300 Kelvin until 9 megapascals. So we can say from the graph that we can see, maybe let's, let's play it safe and say 8 megapascals. Okay, so this would be like around 8 megapascals. And you can see that it behaves like ideal gas anywhere to the left of this. Once you go above eight kilopascals, we start having uh, more problems. Now, the other conclusion we can make from our graph is that as pressure goes to zero or the pressure, as the pressure is lower, we can see that the nitrogen behaves like an ideal gas regardless of temperature, right? So if we look at a temperature of 200, if we go close to zero, most of our temperatures are gonna behave like an ideal gas. We're gonna be very close to that 1.0. And we can also conclude from this chart that at a low temperature, so like 130 degrees Kelvin, for example, or high pressure, 
Z significantly deviates from one. And when Z deviates from one, we can't really call it an ideal gas anymore. So in order to make something an ideal gas, what we're, what we're gonna set up as a rule is we're gonna say to be considered an ideal gas, Z should be between 0 0.95 and 1.05. Okay, so the value of Z should be between 0.95 and 1.05. And what you can say is this is okay to assume ideal gas. So in some problems you're going to get this semester, you're going to be asked, is it okay to assume ideal gas for this problem? And you would look up, you would try and find your Z, and then from your Z, you would decide, okay, it seems like it is okay because Z is close to one, or it seems that it's not okay because Z is, um, is not close to one. Now, this graph above here, is available for nitrogen. So if we have a nitrogen at a certain pressure and temperature, we could say, all right, we have nitrogen at a pressure of four megapascals and we know the temperature is 300 Kelvin. Therefore, um, it's okay to assume ideal gas from this chart, okay? Now, what if you have a different, a different substance like air or carbon dioxide or anything like that? You would need one chart per you need one chart for every single um, for every single substance. Now, the nice thing that we can figure out is that we can actually create a plot for all substances instead. So, all substances and this is mostly for all gases can be plotted on a common graph by normalizing temperature and pressure. So normalizing temperature and pressure means that we're just going to create a new term for pressure and temperature with one of the properties of our gases. And if you remember earlier in this module, we talked about the critical properties and the critical, for example, property of water was the critical pressure was 22.06 megapascals. That critical property is the critical point. It's this point right here. Sorry, let me change the color. It's this point right here. So this point is different for every gas. If we use this point, we can normalize pressure and temperature to have a graph that's common to everyone. So bear with me for a second until I show you the graph. But essentially what we would do is we would create a term called the reduced temperature and reduced pressure. And this is gonna be a P sub R and a T sub R. And this is gonna be equal to the actual pressure that we're looking at over PC. And this would be the temperature over TC. And these two values are the critical properties. And critical properties can be found in table A1 in your appendix. Okay, so in, in your appendix A1, you can find those values for the gases you're looking for. 
And table A15, or I should say maybe chart A15, but it's it's A15 in your in your appendix would have a generalized chart of Z versus pressure reduced now versus temperature reduced. And we're going to look at it in a second. So the idea here is that we're going to do some examples to try and figure out what is happening when we have, when we're given some values, we now can do some examples to figure out, okay, is this an ideal gas or not? The question will be, is it reasonable to assume ideal gas behavior at each given state, pretty much? So I'm going to show you the critical properties and chart A15, and then we'll do some example problems uh, to try and understand what is happening. OK, so this, this is the generalized chart, and it looks very complex, but it's actually pretty simple to read. But essentially, what you have here is the same thing as before. We have this compressibility factor Z is equal to PV over RT. And you have your reduced pressure here, which is a substitute for pressure. And we can see that we have our equations directly here for our reduced pressure, reduced temperature, so that that'll make it easy to follow. We're not going to be using pseudo reduced volume. We're just going to focus on reduced pressure and reduced temperature. And the reduced temperature values are actually the lines that are going downwards. So this is 1, 1.05, 1.10, 1.15, and we have 0 0.95, 0 0.9, 0 0.85, 0 0.8, etc. Okay, so it's these lines that are traveling in this direction. Okay, and the volume lines which we're going to ignore are the ones traveling in the other direction. So you can see the volume lines are traveling sort of, they're the, um, they're not like the lines are moving from bottom left to top right, but we're not going to look at those. And so if we have the reduced temperature of something, we have the reduced pressure of something, we can then find if it's an ideal gas and figure out what the compressibility factor would be. Okay, so we're going to do some examples just to get through it. And then these examples can be used in your um, study problems for for module two. So going to table A1, we can see that in table A1, we have the critical properties. So we have temperature and pressure. So we do have critical properties of temperature and pressure. So it makes it very easy to, to analyze uh, our problems. OK, so let's do an example. And it'll become very clear how it works and what we have to do. So first example I want to do. So the question, the leading question is, it is going to be, can we assume ideal gas essentially? And the first problem we're going to have is we're going to be given nitrogen at 20 degrees Celsius and one megapascal. So one way to solve this would be to go to your nitrogen chart and figure out if it works because we have nitrogen in this case. But we're actually going to be doing it. We're actually going to be doing it using the um, the table A15 and our appendix one essentially. So the first step in these questions, and it's always going to be the same step, is the first thing we have to do in order to use the chart in 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 the appendix is to say, all right, the first thing we have to do is we have to reduce temperature and we have to reduce pressure. So we have to find PR and TR. That's the first thing. And to find PR and TR, we're given pressure and temperature. So we have to find T critical and P critical. So we're going to go to chart A1. And here we are in chart A1. We're going to look for 
uh, we're going to look for nitrogen. Nitrogen is right in the middle there. It's right here. And we're going to go along the line and we're going to find that the critical temperature is 126.2 and the critical pressure is 3.39. So we're going to write that down. So we have a critical temperature of 126.2 Kelvin and we have a critical pressure of 3.39 megapascals. Okay. And now from that, we have to find, we can find our pressure reduced and temperature reduced. So pressure reduced is going to be equal to 1 over 3.39. So 1 megapascals over 3.39, which is equal to 0.294. We're going to approximate it to 0.3 because we're using a chart anyways, so it doesn't have to be exactly precise. And temperature reduced is equal to T over TC, which is equal to 20 degrees Celsius plus 273 over 126.2. So make sure you do convert to Kelvin to not get it wrong, okay? And this is now equal to 2.32 as a temperature reduced, okay? And what we're gonna figure out is from our chart, what does Z equal? So from our chart, what does Z equal? Okay, so we're gonna go to our chart and we're gonna figure out what Z could equal. So we're gonna go to table A15. And we're gonna go to this first chart and you can see that the chart is given for low pressures from zero to one. There's also another chart that gives us zero to seven. So depending on your pressure reduced, you can use the first chart or the second chart. In our case, it's exactly the same chart. It's just one chart is zooming into this area, essentially. Okay, so the first chart is just zooming into this area. Now, since our pressure reduced is, is 0 0.3, we can use the first chart. We can use the sort of zoomed in charts to make sure that we see what's happening. So we know that P reduced is 0 0.3 at this value. So we know that our operating point is going to be somewhere here. And we also know that our temperature reduced is 2.32. And so we see the values of temperature reduced here of 2 and 3. So it's going to be between 2 and 3. Now it's very hard to see, and this chart is not ideal, but it is possible to find out but essentially, if we look, we can follow this line across. So this would be the line of two. Okay, so this is the two line. And we're going to follow it across. And we're going to see that we're right there, very close. We're intersecting right here. And we see that the three line is just above. So it's somewhere in between those two values. Very, very close together. And we can see that that's equivalent to a Z of 1.0. So if I erase the red lines just so we can see what's happening, if we look, we're gonna be between this point right here and this point right here. So we're essentially gonna be very, very close to one. Maybe 1.01 .01 or one point, or just one. Okay, so Z from charts is gonna be equal to one, or 1.01, .01, which means we can assume ideal gas. We're very close and we're within the bound that we said earlier of 0 0.95 to 1.05. Okay, so let's do another example just so that we have, um, so that we know uh, what's happening and we can try something else. So let's try carbon dioxide, a different gas. And we're going to say carbon dioxide at 20 degrees Celsius and 1 megapascal. Okay, so we're going to have carbon dioxide at 20 degrees Celsius, 1 megapascal. And now we're going to do the same procedure. So we're going to find PC and TC critical first. 
So if we go to table A1, back to the top of this. So table A1, we're gonna look for carbon dioxide, which is somewhere here in the middle. So the values are gonna be here and here. And we see that we have a temperature of 304.2 and a pressure of 7.39. So we have a pressure of 7.39 megapascals and a temperature of 304.1 Kelvin. I'm pretty sure it's point, uh, it's point 0.2, sorry, 304.2. And following that, we can find our reduced temperature and reduced pressure. So P reduced, I'm not going to go through the math, but you can do it yourself, is 0.96. And temperature reduced, sorry, pressure reduced is 0.136, not 0.96. 0.136. And temperature reduced is 0 0.96 okay and now we're going to go back to our chart and figure out can we assume ideal gas yes or no so we're going to go to our chart with our new values for p reduced and t reduced and we're going to figure out if they do work or not so let me just erase everything so we get started again with a fresh drawing and again, since our pressure reduced is below one, we're gonna be using the first chart once again. So this time we have 0.136, so somewhere around here. So if I keep moving this along, it's gonna cut somewhere in between here. And we know that our temperature reduced is very close to one. So we can just use the value for temperature reduced of one. And we can see that the temperature reduced value is right here. If we follow this along, we see that it crosses, it crosses our, let me write it, let me draw it in blue. It crosses somewhere right here. And again, this doesn't have to be precise, okay? If you don't get it precisely right, it's okay. So we have a value that's somewhere around here. And this would be like 0.955 or something like that. Okay, so we have that Z from our chart is equal to 0.955, for example, okay? And, and this is approximate, and it's fine if it's approximate, okay? It's using a chart, so we can't be 100% precise all the time. Okay, so can we assume ideal gas? Yes, we can assume ideal gas, and it's going to be very close, but yes, we could assume ideal gas. Okay, so we can say assume IG, so I'm going to put IG for ideal gas is okay. But if you went to the trouble of finding Z, would you use ideal gas or would you use a different equation? So if you went through the trouble for carbon dioxide to find Z, would you then use, if you were given a problem, would you then use PV? equals RT or PV is equal to ZRT since you know Z is not one. You would use this equation, okay? So you would use this equation because it's more precise. You're actually figuring out, look, our Z is actually 0.95 or 0.955. So why don't we use the new equation which says PV is equal to 0.95 times RT. Well, ideally you would do that. And ideally you would check if it's an ideal gas every time. However, in our class, we try and simplify our process by sort of making it easier for ourselves by not having to do these calculations every single time. So trying to figure out if it's an ideal gas. We just assume an ideal gas. And then at the end of the problem, we can check was it okay to assume ideal gas or should we do more work and redo it with Z? But if you go through the trouble of using Z, then it makes sense that you would use Z for the problem, especially if Z is not one. Okay, so even if you can assume an ideal gas, you can still use 
z with a 0.955 or the 0.95 to solve the problem. Okay, so the last uh, the last thing I wanted to do was to sort of look at uh, a small problem where we can determine. So this is a different type of problem, but the question is determine specific volume for R134A. Sorry about that. R134A um, at 100 degrees Celsius and 1600 kilopascals. And we're going to be doing this three different ways. So we're going to be trying this with tables. And then we're going to be trying it with ideal gas. And then from our chart of compressibility. So this is just an exercise to try and see the differences between ideal gas using tables and the chart of compressibility. Now, the first thing I will tell you is which way should we find specific volume if we were given the option for R134A? You would always choose the option of using tables. Okay, tables is experimental data. It's the easiest way to get it, and it's the most precise way to get it because we know that the tables are always right. The tables are a mapped out graph of R134A, so we shouldn't use any other method. But for this exercise, we just want to see the deviation between volume found for ideal gas, volume found using the compressibility charts, and specific volume found for R134A tables. So let's start with part A using the tables. So we have a temperature of 100 degrees, a pressure of 1600 kilopascals. So we can go directly to our R134A tables and try and find specific volume. So going to our tables, we're gonna go to table A11, which is our first table. And I'm actually gonna go to the pressure table A12 for the reason that we had talked about earlier in the module, that if we look at the pressure of 1600 and we see the temperature, so 1600, and then we see that T saturated is, so T sat is equal to 57.88. So what does that mean? That means that our temperature, which is 100 degrees Celsius, is above T sat. And remember, T sat is T boiling. So that means that the R134A has already boiled, which therefore means that we have a superheated vapor. And because we have a superheated vapor, we now can go to our superheated vapor table and figure out what our specific volume would be for the pressure given which is 1.6 megapascals. Okay, it's 1,600 kilopascals. And at 100 degrees. So we would just, we know 100 degrees is here. We know the pressure is here. So we have this little box we can use and we can find our specific volume from here. So our specific volume is 0 0.016014. So I'm just gonna write that down. From table, from table A13, specific volume is equal to 0 0.016014 meters cubed per kilogram. Okay, this is the right way to do it. This is the way you want to do it if you have R134A. Now, the way you don't wanna do it is just assume that you have an ideal gas and R134A being an ideal gas and just going with it. It's possible, but we'll see what the answer is. 
So we're going to use PV is equal to RT. So we can rearrange this to find V. V is equal to RT over P. And R we can find from table A1. So if we go to table A1, we can find R for R134A. We see R134A at the bottom here. It's right here, this one right there. So we can find an R of 0 0.08149. So you see the gas constant is right there. So it's 0 0.08149. So let me write that down. R is equal to 0 0.08149. And now we have all the values. We need to convert the temperature to Kelvin, so we can't forget. We have all the values. So we have R times T, so 0 0.08149, multiplied by 373 for T, divided by 1,600 kilopascals. And we have a volume that comes out to 0 0.019074 meters cubed per kilogram. So we see that there's already a huge difference between the two. Which one is correct? The first one. Okay, so we can clearly say that it doesn't behave like an ideal gas because the ideal gas gave us such a different value than our tables. Now, using the compressibility charts as a third way, we can use the same technique as before. So let's try and figure out what Z would be first. So we first find TC and PC from table A1, and I'll just write them down because you can go look for them after by yourselves, but we have 374.2 Kelvin and 4.06 megapascals. And we then find the reduced pressure and temperature. So pressure reduced would be 0 0.39 from plugging in the values. And TR would be essentially equal to one, okay? 374 over 37, 373 over 374 is gonna be equal to one, very close to one. And we're gonna find Z. So we're gonna use our compressibility chart to find Z with those values. So let's go back to our compressibility chart. We're gonna be using the zoomed in one because we again have a value of, we have a value of, um, we have a value of pressure under one. So let me erase all this just so we have a clear start. And we know that our pressure reduce is 0.39. So now we're going to be operating right here at 0.39. So we're going to go to 0.39 and just keep looking up and keep going up all the way up. And we know that our value is going to be where TR is equal to 1 is going to cross this. So it's going to be somewhere here. And if we look at that somewhere here, if we go across, we see that our value for Z is going to be something like 0 0.855. Okay, so our value for Z is going to be equal to 0 0.855. And following that, we can clearly state that ideal gas cannot be assumed okay it's very clear that ideal gas cannot be assumed and now we can use the modified equation with pv is equal to zrt to try and figure out what our specific volume would be so we're going to rearrange this so that V is equal to ZRT over P. And essentially, we get a V of 0 0.016245, okay, which is uh, meters cubed per kilogram. And now we can actually see that we're pretty close to the right value now.
So you can see the power of using Z. If you compare the answer to part C, which is 0 0.016245, with the answer in part A, which is 0 0.016014, we're actually pretty close. So Z is actually a pretty good estimate of how R134A would behave. However, this only works if R134A is a superheated vapor. So remember that if R134A is a mix or anything, then Z wouldn't work very well. Z only works if you're using a gas and you modify that equation for a gas. And we see that Obviously, ideal gas would not be used for R134A in this case. Okay, so this concludes our module two lectures. So the next module is going to be module three. Uh, it will be released um, further along the semester. So for quiz one, which is going to be uh, the first quiz for this class, we will not be looking at ideal gas. Okay. So anything on ideal gas will be used for anything further down the line. Okay, so quiz one, you can focus on the first parts of these modules and not the last two parts where we looked at ideal gas. Okay, so this concludes module two, and we'll see you in videos for module three following this.